I always promote the Word of God. The ministry uh, that the Lord gave me is to preach and promote His Word. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the Word of God shall not pass away. You know, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the Word of God stands forever. Amen? Amen. So today my topic is, why did Jesus walk on water? Just think for a moment. John writes in his gospel that if he wanted to write all the things that Jesus has done, he believed that the entire world may not be sufficient to contain them. So just think how important each and every verse in the Bible that God has preserved. In other words, God has filtered his word from a huge book which is not even sufficient to fit in this world. So the 66 books that we have in our Bibles is a filtered word of God. If this whole church building is built with diamonds and if I ask you to choose only 66, what would you do? You will try to check each and every one and you will take the best, you will take which is important, you will take which is needed in your life. So just think for a moment how important that, you know, each and every verse in the Bible that God has given unto us. But here is a question. If God has filtered or preserved this word of God out of a huge book, which even this whole earth is not sufficient to contain, why did we see repeatedly in the Gospels the same miracle or the same teaching of Jesus Christ? I got a doubt. Then the Lord gave me an idea to just bring all the references wherever the same incident is recorded in the Bible and the Lord told me to study now. And the Lord gave me amazing insights. Many times, you know, we read about the blind man being healed in Matthew. And, you know, when we read next time in Mark, Luke or John, we blindly read it because we think that we have already read it. So we don't put our concentration. We can bring all these three references together because Jesus walking on water, we find it in Matthew Gospel, chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. And we also find it in Mark Gospel, chapter 6, verses 45 to 56. And we also see that in John 6, 16 to 24. So we see this miracle in all three Gospels. So if I would have time, you know, we would have studied verse by verse in each Gospel. But uh, the time is short. So let's go to Matthew and chapter 14, verse 24. Here the Word of God says, but the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. This journey was started because Jesus told them to go to the other side. Remember, this journey is not started because they disobeyed God. We see in the life of Jonah, he disobeyed God and started his journey by sheep and we see the storm coming. But this journey here was started because they obeyed God. But at then we see the Matthew stating that but when the sheep was now in the midst of the sea. I wanted to compare this sheep as our spiritual journey. And I wanted to compare the waves with the trials, tribulations, temptations, troubles, whatever you encounter in this world. So now when the disciples started their spiritual journey according to the word of the Lord, now the devil is trying to toss up the waves. So what he did is he brought wind so that the waves will toss up. Do you know what happened when the waves toss up? The water will come into the ship. The ship will sink. So devil always wanted to blow the wind. Remember, devil 
cannot do anything directly to you. Do you know in the garden of Eden what happened? The devil did not pluck the fruit and you know just try to force and put it in the Eve's mouth. He will never do like that because he doesn't have that authority to do that. He will always try to do something in indirect way. When the waves are tossed, the water comes into the ship and makes ship sink. So the primary purpose of devil is to discourage you, disappoint you, destroy you. Devil doesn't want you to go to the other side. Devil doesn't want you to go to the heaven. Devil doesn't want you to enjoy the spiritual blessings that God has preserved for you. So he always tries to attack you in the middle. Remember, here is a simple thing. Water is needed for our journey in ship, isn't it? If there is no water, we doesn't need a ship. See, for our ship journey, the water should be under the ship. The purpose of God allowing trials, tribulations, temptations, troubles is that we may continue in our spiritual journey. Praise the Lord. But the devil is trying same water to pour into your ship so that the ship may sink down. So most of the times in our spiritual life, I have encountered that, you know, if something happens to me which I don't expect, I think, you know, God is not looking after me. The devil wants to use the same water to disappoint you, discourage you, destroy you. But God wanted to use the same water to get to the other side. Why Jesus walked on the water? He clearly writes here. Mark Gospel 6 verse 48 says, And he saw them toiling in rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea, and would have passed by them. Why did Jesus walk on the water? He could have stopped the storm from where he is. He's an almighty God. He could have just said, Lord, stop that storm. Stop that wind. Calm the waves. But do you know why Jesus walked on the water? To make understand his disciples that he is above the water. Hallelujah. He's above all our trials. He's above all our temptations. He's above all our troubles. He is a God that is above everything. Hallelujah. No matter how strong the devil may try to blow the wind, no matter how big waves are going to hit your ship, God is above everything. He's above all the water. So the devil tried to use the same water to attack disciples. But Jesus walked on the same water to prove that, you know, I am your God. If you can trust me, you know, I will help you to overcome. So Mark writes that. He's a God that sees our situation. He's a God that hears our supplication. He's a God that helps in our supplication, sufferings. Here is the greatest miracle happening that Jesus now walking on the water. But do you know what devil did? Matthew gospel again, they, the Holy Spirit is writing. Matthew 14, 26 says, And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. Saying it is a spirit and, uh, and they cried out in fear. It is a greatest miracle that God is doing, but still they are afraid. Devil always shows God as ghost. Here, the devil is using same situation when, when their Lord and Savior is, you know, above the situation, when, when he is coming on the water, now the devil is trying to show them that it is not a God, it is a ghost. 
So they are afraid. So in your troubles, in your trials, temptations, whatever in your situation, you feel the same. Is it not true? You feel, where is God? Devil always wants to double your trouble. But God wants to double your blessing. Amen? We see, you know, Job was blessed with double blessings. But here, devil, you know, already the disciples are in fear. They are discouraged, disappointed. They don't know what to do, you know, because of that wind and because of that waves hitting the ship. But in the same time, now the devil is doubling the trouble and, you know, making Jesus as a ghost. We see in the Mark Gospel, chapter 6 and verse 50, And they all saw him and were troubled, and immediately he talked with them. And said unto them, Be of good cheer, it is, I be not afraid. When the devil tried to double the trouble, immediately Jesus spoke to them. That's what Mark is writing. And he told them, Be of good cheer. I am your God. I am the one that has sent you to the other side. Don't be afraid. I am coming to you. We always don't hear God's voice. The reason, you know, why we don't recognize God's voice. Just think for a moment. The storm or the waves did not calm down when Jesus stepped on the water. The Bible did not say like that. The storm is coming, the waves are tossed up, the wind is blowing, even while Jesus was walking on the water. But the disciples of Jesus Christ were able to hear his voice, praise the Lord, because they had the experience of hearing God's word. So I encourage you to read the Bible every day, to hear God's voice. If you don't hear God's voice when the situations are calm, you can never hear God's voice in the midst of this world noise. Because they knew the, the voice of the Lord, because they had the, that experience previously, now in spite of that storm, they were able to hear God's voice. Many times we look to God in our trouble, and say, Lord, where are you? What are you doing? Why am I here? Do you know God is talking to you, but you can't understand? Many believers in India accept Jesus Christ, but in the middle of their journey, they will try to attack them. They say, Jesus is not a God because he did not help me, because he did not do that. The problem is, they never heard God's voice, which means they never had a habit of reading God's word daily. So that made them to misunderstand God. So in my television program or wherever I go to preach, you know, I encourage every believer to read the Bible every day. Because if you read it, you can hear God's voice in any situation. Remember, when God talked to them, they heard and understood that it is Jesus' wise. Amen. See, when they saw him, they could not recognize him as a Jesus. But they heard him, they recognized he is a Jesus. That is the speciality of the word of God. You know, it will speak to you. It will strengthen you. It will, it will give you life. It will give you hope. It will give you understanding. The word of God is our resource. It gives you whatever you need in your spiritual life. Peter wanted to walk on the water. How much he understood the voice of the Lord. Just for a second, they were afraid of ghosts. They thought it is a ghost, but just a second after, when they heard God's voice, when they heard Jesus speaking to them, they realized it is God. Look how much they understood. Now Peter said, okay, Lord, I wanted to come to you walking on the water. Do you know why God let Peter walk on the water? 
He wants us to be victorious. Hallelujah. He wants us to walk on every problem. The problem should be under our spiritual life. They should not dominate our spiritual life. Every problem, every trouble, every trial, every temptation. The reason why God allows is so that we can experience the victory in our life. Here the Holy Spirit is writing an interesting thing. John 6, 20 and 21. Then they willingly received him in the ship. Do you know when? When they heard the voice of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Until then they were afraid. Who is this ghost coming towards us? But when they heard God's voice. They recognized it. And that helped them to accept Jesus into their ship. Many times we don't willingly welcome Jesus into our problems, into our troubles, into our trials, temptations. Do you know why? We think God is a ghost at that time. They will try to do that because he doesn't want you to understand God. That's why many people, you know, they hear many hours, many sermons, but they don't read the Bible. But I encourage you to read the Bible every day. I'm not telling listening to sermons is bad. In India, many people, what they do, they switch on Christian television every day for about an hour. They don't read God's word. They switch on the television. It has become a tradition. Even they don't hear it, they will be doing their work. So they think if one hour TV is on, we are blessed. But I wanted to encourage you to read the Bible every day. Because if you can read it, you can hear his voice. So when they heard it, and the Bible says, then they willingly received him into the ship. So my question is Jesus in our ship. Do you know when they willingly, you know, accepted Jesus into the ship? Matthew writes, chapter 14, 32, And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Praise the Lord. The wind which devil wanted to blow is now ceased. Don't worry about the winds. Don't worry about the waves. Don't worry about the storms. Don't worry about the suffering, struggles, trials, temptations. Whatever you know you, you encounter in your spiritual life, there is a purpose. He's about everything and he wants you to be about everything. May the Lord help us to read his word. I just wanted to close with a word of prayer. So just, you know, for a moment, I want you to think about the sermon that you heard or the winds coming in your spiritual journey are the waves being tossed up are you in fear are you thinking why Lord this disease are you asking God why did he allow this in your life if you are thinking that Lord I accepted you as your personal savior I am a believer but why did this happen to me the disciples might have got the same question Oh Lord, why this storm? Because we obeyed you. With your word, we started our journey. But why Lord? If this question is in your life, my dear brother and sister, I wanted to encourage you. There is a purpose. You know, you understand that purpose. If you can hear God speaking in that situation, they will always try to not to recognize his voice. He always tries to bring other voices, other noises, so that you cannot recognize his voice. But if you have the experience of hearing his voice, you can recognize it. If you can recognize God's voice in the trouble, in the trial, in the temptation, you know, you know, you will see who he is. When you see who he is, when you hear what he says to you, fear not, be of good cheer. I'm the God that told you to follow me. I'm the God. 
you know, that started faith in you. I'm the author and finisher of your faith. When you hear that, you will, you will have a faith that, yes, Lord, I can walk on the water that is being tossed up. When you hear him, you will willingly accept him into your ship. This is time to accept God into our ship, into our spiritual journey. Because if He can be in our ship, everything will be seized. Whatever the devil may try to bring, but He is a God that can seize everything. When He sees it, that there was peace, there was calmness, there was joy, there was happiness, in their spiritual journey. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come into thy presence, Lord. Thank you for your word, Lord. Help us to read your word every day, Lord, so that we can hear your voice, so that we can hear your voice even in the midst of the storms that devil brings in our spiritual life so that we may welcome you always so that we may always be willing to have you in our journey so that we may have a victorious life in the name of jesus i pray amen i do all glory to god thank you